I realized recently, if I had done only the trips that I planned for, then I would have been one of the most traveled people in history, and probably the most traveled. I will come back to this in the next episode. The reason I mention it is my passion and pursuit of travel must then have been extreme. I believe passion and pursuit is something that can be learned or taught. It then can be used for whatever purpose one wishes. I believe I too can learn from it and apply it to other areas of my life. I would also suggest that this is the case for anyone. Anyone can look at a strong personal trait and apply the mindset associated with it to other areas in one's life. I believe that the greatest teacher can and should be oneself. I think all people err in that we do not listen to our productive thoughts as much as we should, and that we don't try to produce more of them. We then do not discover who we are and the possibilities of what we can be. The more I traveled, the more I had to travel. It became an addiction to see and understand what I didn't know. Had I become a professional traveler, I would have become even more obsessive about it. During times I worked, I just put travel out of my mind, unless I was planning a trip. After a trip, I would usually research for about a year to better understand what I had seen. To not have done my travels, to me, would feel like a sort of death. A death of my mind, the death of curiosity, and the death of possibilities. Never have I worried about or questioned all I had to go through to understand or see. There is simply nothing that could have stopped me short of death or severe injury from pursuing this. I was convinced that I wasn't going to die or receive a severe injury. The exception was the caravan trip, which I mentioned in the previous episodes. I thought the likelihood of death was greater than 50% if I took the unknown variables to be as bad as they could be. Since I spoke about the episode, I have learned that the Tuareg can survive on about a glass of water a day. Walking 40 to 45 miles on the sand, 60 to 65 to 70 kilometers per day, in the scorching sun, I would have needed a gallon and a half to two gallons or five and a half to seven liters per day of water, about 15 times what the Tuareg required. The Tuareg would have rationed a glass of a day of water for me. Maybe there was a way around it through research, but I couldn't do the research as I had no access to anything modern at the time. No one had done the whole trip I was looking to do, not in total. Two other trips that I passed on were both deep into the Amazon. One was to explore and collect archeological evidence on a ruined and lost city. Each expedition to the lost city required cutting through dense Amazonian jungle. I was strongly warned about the health exposures. I was told you will get sick, very sick. The second trip was with a person from the Amazon who had assimilated into Western culture and had become a world traveler. He was interested in discovering unknown languages and unknown tribes in the Amazon. This again would have been a lot of bushwhacking or making our own trails and living under the most primitive of conditions. Both trips seemed quite interesting and I wouldn't mind the labor of cutting through the dense jungles but the guarantee of health problems was another thing. The rest of my trip would not be nearly as risky to my health. Both trips would require hiking great distances through dense, wet, very hot, and humid jungle. My health through my travels has been remarkably good, despite putting myself often in adverse conditions. I knew both of these trips. When sickness hit, I would have been expected to continue on 
as I wouldn't have had access to a hospital or even a civilized place to recover. Much of this would have been through places modern man has not been. There would be numerous known illnesses, but also likely unknown ones. The discovery of tribes would be fascinating, but they would be completely unaware of the modern world. Their language would be unknown. We would have no idea how friendly or how belligerent they were. One possibility might be that they were cannibalistic or that such a sight as us might cause them to fight until death. If I had seen much of the remainder of South America, or if I had reached the stage of being a professional traveler, I would have done these trips. I didn't again hear from the archeologist, nor the person native to the Amazon. I did later have contact with two of the people who did go with the native Amazonian. A few people have done the trip in total, and all of them wound up in the hospital for extended periods of time after the trip. The misery from the trip had them regretting having done it. Each mentioned the trip was unimaginably difficult, and that the experience will always haunt them. They mentioned nothing positive, about the experience, even though they did discover an unknown tribe and language. I don't think my post-trip attitude would have been negative. I would have relished the experience for whatever it was. There was a third trip I was offered, which was, as I saw it, completely crazy. It was to explore the underground tunnels of the Incas, Apparently, a tremendous amount of gold from the Incas is unaccounted for and thought by some to be in these tunnels. I have read that not a single person has made it back from these searches, either alive or in the case of one who later was pronounced insane. The insane man came back from a governmental expedition and described the tunnels as something like in an Indiana Jones film. Booby traps were everywhere, and which it is suspected the source of all the deaths of the searchers. The person who asked me to go, who would have led the search, was never heard from again. I suspect he too may have died in the search. The next episode, I will look at the trips I had planned, but had to cancel for some reason. Thank you so much for watching. And please support the channel by liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next episode.